Well, thank you, praise the Lord, for the opportunity to be back with you this week and to expound to you the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Glad for each and every one that's listening and uh, for the response. Uh, uh, send your notices uh, uh, if you've got comments or whatever uh, about the program. Just let me know. Praise the Lord. And if you're in the, uh, the area listening and you're in different places, you live different places, uh, uh, from time to time I'll mention a church in your area, praise the Lord, where you might be able to get into. Uh, over Clarksburg, if you're in the Clarksburg area and you're watching this today, uh, uh, Holy Trinity Chapel on Old Bridgeport Hill uh, above the bowling alley. Uh, if you uh, get over there, Sister Patty Post is the pastor there. Praise the Lord. I want to come to you today in chapter 7, praise the Lord, in uh, 2 Chronicles. I'll be preaching there a little bit and then going over into another area. Channel, uh, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house uh, of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Heavenly Father, just have your way in this, uh, over this word, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost go forth. Uh, bring conviction, Lord, upon souls that are out, of, out in sin. Oh, Lord of God, and touch hearts and lives and souls in the church, Lord. Oh, God, that the blessings of thee could be upon their lives. We find in the church today, praise the Lord, there's many times uh, 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 people go to church uh, anymore just because of out of habit uh, or to make it look good uh, uh, in the community or businesses. Uh, go, uh, uh, businessmen uh, will go to church uh, because it's good for business. Uh, but I'm telling you, if we're going to see revival in the church, if we're going to see revival in this land, if the church is going to make an impact in the, the world situation that we have today, then we're going to have to pray. The church is going to have to pray as Solomon prayed. I don't know how long he prayed. I don't know what he prayed. But praise the Lord, when he finished praying, the glory of God, the Bible said, the Spirit, the glory, of God came down in the temple, hallelujah, and the priest could not enter in. I'm telling you, when the church begins to pray, hallelujah, the, uh, the glory of the Lord won't come down, hallelujah, into the churches. It won't come down into the buildings, but it will come down into these temples. I believe the glory of God, when God's people begins to pray, hallelujah, I believe the glory of God will come down in the hearts, the lives, the souls of God's people that are serving Him, that are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, that are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe, hallelujah, the glory of God will come down to where, uh, hallelujah, sin uh, would not even be seen. Uh, hallelujah, the sin would not even take a part or, or have anywhere uh, in uh, this temple. Praise the Lord. We are the temples uh, of the Holy Ghost, uh, and the Holy Ghost will not dwell uh, in an unclean temple. Uh, it's time uh, for the church uh, to get prayed up. It's time for the church to come to God. Hallelujah. Humbly falling down before Him. As it says here in the same chapter, verse 14. I want to read this. This is what God says. If His people will do this, 
Hallelujah. He said, if my people, the 14th verse, 7th chapter, 2 Chronicles, uh, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves uh, and pray uh, and seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways, uh, then will I hear from heaven uh, and will forgive their sin uh, and will heal their lands. Hallelujah. It's time that the church begins to humble themselves down before God. Those that are called by His name, those that are saved, those, hallelujah, that might be lukewarm today and and a little away from the, the, the fire, hallelujah, it's time, hallelujah, that you come back to the starting place. It's time to humble ourselves down uh, and pray. Uh, prayer changes things. Uh, I'm telling you, without prayer, uh, you'll not get nothing done. Uh, God wants to hear His people bring their requests and their petitions up to Him. He said, come boldly unto the throne of God and make your petitions known. Pastors, uh, come boldly before God uh, and make your petitions known uh, for your church. Oh, let him know. Let God know, hallelujah, that the power of God needs to move. Hallelujah. Oh, I pray that you would humble yourselves, men and women of God, to humble themselves as he said here and pray. Hallelujah. And seek the Lord. We need to seek the Lord. Daniel prayed three times a day, morning, noon, and night. He sought the Lord, not for himself, but he sought the Lord for the people. Hallelujah. We have an obligation to seek the Lord until the power of God begins to move, until the spirit of power, the Holy Ghost, begins to move uh, in our lives, uh, in the churches. Uh, then when the, the Holy Ghost begins to move, uh, hallelujah, he says to, to turn from the wicked ways. Uh, hallelujah. Turn from uh, what we've been doing. Uh, turn away uh, from the world uh, and come back uh, to the Lord. Uh, call out upon him. Hallelujah. He said he's instant to hear. His ears are always turned toward the righteous. Uh, we need to come before God to seek him. Uh, hallelujah. Turn from the wicked ways. Then he said he would hear from heaven. Hallelujah. And when God hears, uh, hallelujah, when God hears your prayers, when he hears your supplication, when he sees uh, that you're determined uh, to touch the throne of God, then God will open the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. He will fill the souls. He will fill them with the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. He will touch each one. He will answer prayer. He's a prayer answering God. He said if you can pray it, if you can believe it, God can do it. Praise the Lord. It's time that we begin to make an impact in the world. It's time that the church begins to stand up. It's time that the church begins, hallelujah, to proclaim the righteousness and holiness of a holy God. He said, I'm a holy God and I have a holy people. Praise the Lord. He said, if you'll turn back, if you'll seek his face, he said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive them of their backslidings. He said he'd forgive you of your shortcomings. He said he would forgive you because you had uh, compromised somewhere along the way. Uh, and the power of God isn't moving now in your church as it did uh, in years gone by. Uh, you can't compromise uh, the Word of God. Uh, the Word of God is true. Uh, Jesus said he was the way, the truth, and the life. And this whole book, hallelujah, is the truth. This whole book is about Jesus Christ. 
It's about the power of God. It tells us how to get the power of the Holy Ghost to move in our lives, in our churches, that we can change uh, things in this world the way they're going. Hallelujah. People have stiffened their necks uh, and they've hardened their hearts. I'm talking about God's people. They've got their mindset uh, determined to do one thing, uh, and that's to please the people. Uh, you can't please the people and please God. You've got to please God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God uh, won't take back seat to nobody or no one, praise the Lord, or nothing. He is God. He always will be God. He will have preeminence uh, in our lives, in our churches. Uh, hallelujah. He won't have no part of it at all. It's time that preachers, hallelujah, begin to preach the truth of God's Word. People need to know the truth. They shall know the truth, Jesus said, and the truth shall make them free. A lie never uh, 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 loosed anybody. A lie never saved anybody. Those that lie and those that believeth a lie they shall both uh, be cast into the lake of fire. Praise the Lord. We've got to preach the truth. Uh, we've got to preach the word of God. Uh, we've got to bring the word of God to the people uh, in power. Hallelujah. In the glory of God. With the power of God moving in our lives. Uh, hallelujah. God wants the church uh, to be alive. Uh, God wants the church uh, to be moving. God wants the church uh, to be preaching. Uh, hallelujah. The greatness and the goodness of him to be preaching Jesus Christ uh, and him crucified for the sins of the world. Hallelujah. If the church doesn't preach the word of God, they are, people will never hear it. Washington's not going to tell them. The government's are not going to tell them. The sinner is not going to tell them. Hallelujah. It's up to you and I. It's up to God's people, God's preachers, God's pastors. Hallelujah. God's Christians, praise the Lord, that are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ to begin to live separated from the world, to begin to live holy and righteously before God. There was a time... Many of the younger ones don't understand. Hallelujah. Many of the younger ones I, I've never seen what we used to see. Hallelujah. Back in the early church. Hallelujah. Up into the 70s. They'd never seen a real Holy Ghost move of God's Spirit, of God's power in the churches because the things of the world uh, have been let come into the church. Uh, people don't dress right no more. They don't look right no more. Hallelujah. And expect God to do something. We need to come back to the old paths. Uh, I want to read here uh, in Jeremiah chapter 6. Uh, hallelujah. The 15th, 16th, and 17th uh, 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 verses. Uh, were they ashamed uh, when they committed abominations. Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, the 16th verse, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, this is what the church is saying today, we will not walk therein. We will not seek for the old path. We won't go back to the faith of the fathers. The church won't go back to the old paths. Then he tells us in the 17th verse, it says, Also I set watchmen over you, saying, 
hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Hallelujah. When he's met the trumpet, he didn't mean, hallelujah, a blowing trumpet. He meant that they would not hearken unto the preachers that are the watchmen for the souls. The saints of God are the watchmen in the church to keep the things of the world out. But the watchmen went to sleep. They went to sleep. They were like dumb dogs, the Bible says, asleep, not caring what was happening. And and we find that as they were asleep, they began to let things come into the church that used to uh, wasn't in the church. Uh, hallelujah. He said to go back. Uh, go back to the starting place. Go back. Uh, hallelujah to the Word of God. Uh, get in the Word of God. Uh, preachers preach uh, the Word of God. Uh, hallelujah that the people might be set free. And when we preach the Word uh, and the glory of God comes down uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost begins to move. Hallelujah. You won't just have five and ten in your congregations. Praise the Lord. There's a hurting and dying world out there. There's people out there that the doctors have given up. They've said there's nothing more we can do for you. You're going to die. There's nothing we can do. They've got no hope because the church is living too far away from God. The church is not praying. The church is not preaching. The church is not moving in the gifts of the Spirit. The church needs to come forth. Stand up. Come out before God. Hallelujah. And preach the truth that the power of God, the Holy Ghost, could move and meet the needs. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God's tired of looking down and see a Laodicean church, a compromising church. He wants to see a church. Hallelujah. A worldwide that is filled with the Holy Ghost. And when the power of God begins to move in your church, when the power of God begins to move in your lives, pastors, evangelists, the people will come everywhere Jesus went. The crowds and the multitudes followed him because one reason they followed him, because he had what they needed. They, wherever he went, there was multitudes. Because he prayed, he gave them healing when they needed it. He fed them when they were hungry. He gave them water when they were thirsty. He met every need that they had. And when the church begins to seek the Lord, and to get the power of the Holy Ghost moving again in the church. When the, uh, when the people, uh, hallelujah, when the preachers start preaching holiness again, telling people how to live, how to walk, uh, how to dress, uh, hallelujah. The, the, world got, the church has got so worldly, you can't tell them apart today. Uh, they look as bad as the world does. Uh, it looks like uh, some of them come to church, uh, get up the lead song service, uh, old, uh, uh, old faded jeans. Uh, some of them got a little bit of a hole here and a little bit of a hole there. Uh, look like they just come from a dog fight and a dog done one. It's time. Hallelujah. The church begins to set the example. Washington's not going to set the example. Washington's trying to shut the church down. God has a people. God has a people. Praise the Lord. Should the trumpet of God sound right now. God has a people that's going to go up in the rapture. But the church as a whole is backslidden. I'm talking about the main line. Pentecostal churches uh, not preaching, not doing what God had called them to do. Not living the way they're supposed to be living. He said to come out from among the world. Be ye separated. Touch not, taste not, handle not the unclean thing. 
Hallelujah. There was a time when the preachers didn't have big education. The people didn't have big educations, but the preachers read in the Bible certain places. This shouldn't be done. And they tell the people, now, if you want God's blessing, if you want God to heal your family, if you want God uh, to put food on the table in the hard times that they was living in, back in the 30s, the 40s, and up into the 50s, uh, when there wasn't many wages, uh, hallelujah, and people, hallelujah, had big families, uh, and, and food was scarce uh, uh, to come by unless you had a farm, uh, unless you had some land to grow you some food. We did. Uh, hallelujah. We did. We, we growed everything. We worked hard all summer. People don't want to work today. Hallelujah. People don't want to serve God today. Uh, hallelujah. It's time. Uh, that the church begins to move. It's time huh, that God's people huh, go back to the fountain. Huh, go back to the fountain of blood. Huh, hallelujah. Get washed again. Huh, hallelujah. Fall down before God huh, and repent huh, of the backslidings. Huh. He said, return unto me, you backsliding children. He said, and I will hear your backslidings. Huh. If you haven't been preaching the truth, preacher, huh, Hallelujah. You're in danger of hellfire. You better get down on your knees. You better go back to God and repent and let God forgive you of your sins. Let God, hallelujah, fill you one more time with the power of the Holy Ghost and let God be the uh, 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 in charge of what you preach. Hallelujah. Let God lead you and praise the Lord. And when this happens, hallelujah, when the power, the, the glory of God begins, begins to come down in the church. I'm talking about the people. When the glory of God begins to come down in the church, uh, hallelujah, those that are hurting, those that are sick, that's in the world that don't go to church. But when they see the church are moving, when they see the people getting healed in church, they see people raised from the dead in church. They see the blind getting healed, the deaf hearing, the dumb talking, the lame walking. Cancer's dropping off. You'll have to rebuild bigger churches. I'll guarantee that because they're living in a time when people have no hope. They're looking for a hope, and the only hope they have is in Christ Jesus. The only hope that is afforded unto them this day is the provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. Abraham said, my God shall provide. I do thank and praise God for everything that he's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to get back. Go back to the old paths. Seek for the old paths. Seek them. And when you find them, walk therein. Hallelujah. It's easy. Just get down on your knees, people. Church, get down and begin to start praying. Hallelujah. Wives, uh, hallelujah, repent and your husbands will get saved. Husbands, repent and your wives will get saved. Husbands and wives, uh, repent, uh, hallelujah, and your children will get saved. Uh, I'm telling you, you got to live the life before them. Uh, hallelujah, you can't let them go and do what they want to do on their own. Uh, hallelujah, children's got their own minds, I know. Uh, hallelujah, but I was kept in church. Uh, Praise the Lord. Did I, I, I serve God all the time? No, but it never left me. But there came a time when God put me in a position that I had to make a decision. When I was 12 years old, God called me to preach. Hallelujah. He called me to preach his word. And I, 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 I was afraid. I was saved. I was afraid that the people wouldn't, wouldn't hear me because I was just only 12 years old. Old, huh? And the devil talked me out of it. Huh? Twelve years later, huh? I was called again, and I accepted that call at the age of 24. Hallelujah, and I've been preaching ever since. Huh? God's good. God's great. Huh? I haven't changed my message huh? in all of those years. Huh? In 43 years that I've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, I've never changed my message. Huh? My message is still righteousness and holiness. My message is still reaching out to God. Huh? Hallelujah. 
hallelujah to the people. But the, the church as a whole has backslid. You can't find good preaching much anywhere. Hallelujah. If he did, the church wouldn't look like they are. Preachers, uh, Pentecostal preachers, preachers that was raised in Pentecost, think nothing of getting up and preaching in the summertime outside on the courthouse lawn. They think nothing of it going out there and preaching in Bermuda shorts. Uh, God killed animals to put on them. Uh, hallelujah. God killed animals to cover Adam and Eve's nakedness. Praise the Lord. He even told Moses, he said, Moses, uh, hallelujah, don't you tell Aaron uh, not to uh, build steps up to the altar. Hallelujah. That, so that the people would not see his nakedness. He wore robes clear to the ground, but if he would get up on a high place, uh, they could see his ankles, uh, and they would see his his uh, 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 nakedness. Uh, God said, I don't want that. Uh, he said, I want you, uh, hallelujah, to tell him, uh, don't build your altars up high like the heathen do. They build their altars up high uh, like uh, so people can see them from afar off. Hallelujah. But he said, you keep them down. Hallelujah. You stay down and keep holy. Don't build yourself up. Don't build your uh, your church up, but build up Jesus. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Praise the Lord. If we're going to lift up Jesus, first of all, we've got to repent. First of all, hallelujah, we've got to be obedient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we've got to pray. Then we've got to come out from among the world. We've got to separate ourselves from the things of the world. Hallelujah. Or we'll never see revival in the church world. We'll go down. Hallelujah. The church world will go down and stay down. And the government will run them under. But I believe if God's people that are called by His name would humble themselves and begin to pray and begin to seek His faith. Face. Uh, I believe uh, God would raise up a church. Uh, hallelujah, a great church. Uh, men and women, boys and girls. Uh, hallelujah, that would walk through this land. Uh, hallelujah, and bring this land back to God. Uh, this uh, this country uh, was uh, uh, founded on God. Uh, they came from the different places uh, because of the persecution in their own land. They came over here to the new country uh, so they could worship God. After the dictates of their hearts, the way they wanted to. They didn't have to worship God according to what somebody else said, but they could worship their God. Hallelujah, out of the Word of God. I praise thee, O God. I thank the Lord. Hallelujah, for the opportunity I have. Hallelujah, to expound the Word of God, to expound and to exhort the church to come back to God. Hallelujah. Come back to Him and begin to pray. To begin to humble yourself down before God. Preachers, begin to preach the Word. Don't compromise the Word. Hallelujah. I've often said, and I've said it on these programs that have been on so far. I've said it here, I think, one time or two. Praise the Lord. I've said this as long as I've been preaching. Praise the Lord. I'd rather have five saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, ready to go to heaven when the trumpet sounds, uh, than to have a, a, a whole church full, five, six hundred people, and take them to hell by preaching and compromising because I'd go there with them. I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. And I want everybody that hears me preach, praise the Lord. I ask God. I, I know it's, uh, it's a prayer that uh, some people say is foolish, uh, but I ask God, uh, hallelujah, to save uh, everyone that's ever heard me preach. Now, everybody that heard Jesus preach wasn't saved. And he was a better preacher than I am. Praise the Lord. But I pray that prayer at least let the Holy Ghost, uh, let the Holy Ghost convict them. I want to pray for you right now as we get ready to get off the air. I want to pray for you uh, that God, if, if you're not saved, kneel down where you're at. Uh, hallelujah. 
and ask him to come into your life. If you're sick, reach out. As I reach my hand to you, uh, uh, reach out uh, uh, toward my hand. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm going to pray that God will touch your body. Hallelujah. Heal you, deliver you, raise you up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Lord, for those ones, Lord, oh God, that are, are, are unsaved. Lord, oh God, that are, are calling out to you right now. Lord, we pray, God, that you would save them. Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away every guilty saint. Let them know that their hearts are right, God, today. Father, those of your people that are sick and afflicted of any affliction, any sickness uh, right now, oh God, we pray, Lord, that you would touch them, you would heal them, you would deliver them, and you would set them free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, amen and amen. As we go off the air, remember this. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. I love him so, I love him so, I love him so, he's so good to Thank you. May God bless you, is my prayer. Praise the Lord.